morning. Thank you so much for being here bright and early. It's a very special day, doubly special day. First of all, it is Palm Sunday, which is pretty special. And second of all, today's organ prayer concert and service are part of the venerable L.A. Bach Festival we are presenting in partnership with Musica Angelica. This festival has a long tradition in Los Angeles and we are thrilled to be part of reviving it at this time. In my prayer route concert, I'm going to emphasize the relationship of Johann Sebastian Bach and Felix Mendelssohn and also include Felix's sister, Fanny. Mendelssohn greatly admired and was influenced by Bach's music. He famously helped revive Bach's music by programming the St. Matthew Passion in Leipzig, Germany in 1829 and again in 1841, more than a century after it was first performed there in 1727. Serendipitously, we're going to hear that very piece in this very room this afternoon at 3 p.m. presented by Musica Angelica with its maestro Martin Haselberg whom I met in 1998 in Capri, Italy. That's a story for another day. Meister Martin told us yesterday that he considers First Congregational Church the perfect venue in Los Angeles to perform this great work and to perform Bach in general, and we agree. I'm going to start my organ program with the first of Felix Mendelssohn's three preludes and fugues, Opus 37 in C minor. Then I'm going to play an organ arrangement of a secular choral piece by Fanny Mendelssohn, Hörst du nicht die Bäume rauschen? Can't you hear the trees rush? Which is the first of her six Gartenlieder, or garden songs, Opus 3. This is a nice tie-in with our growing community gardens program. Then I'm gonna play, and this, my notes don't say that, I left, I left out the one piece that is probably one of the most famous organ pieces overall, Bach's Passacaglia in C minor. It's actually a Passacaglia and Fugue. The way a lot of Passacaglia works is they have a theme in triple meter. It's gonna be introduced in the pedals by the feet first, and then gonna be repeated over and over with the parts in the hands changing. At some point, the theme wanders into the hands and then Bach concludes it with a great fugue, one of the great classics in the repertoire, Passacaglia in C minor. And at the end of my organ program, I'm going to play one of my mashups that I'm famous or infamous for, When Felix Met J.S. Presumably, this happened in heaven, since Felix was born 69 years after Johann Sebastian merged with the universe or multiverse. In the mashup, I'm going to weave in and out of Happy and Blessed Are There, Happy and Blessed Are They, from Mendelssohn's St. Paul Oratorio, and Bach's Prelude in C minor from Das Wohltemperierte Klavier. If you would like to hear the great organs of First Church online, please visit the churches and my personal social media channels, including YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Enjoy it while it's still there. We continuously put out new content. If you would like to support upkeep, improvements, concerts, and recordings featuring the great organs, please go to fccla.org forward slash give and select organ from the pull down menu. You may also talk to Reverend Chad or myself personally. After today, we will have yet more exciting events coming up that feature the great organs in concert this spring. On Sunday, April the 14th, I think that's three weeks from today, yes. Sunday, April 14th at 3 p.m., the American Guild of Organists, Los Angeles Chapter, and FCCLA will team up in presenting a tribute to our organist emeritus, the legendary Fred Swan, who left us in 2022. The performers will be our former organ scholar and Fred's last student, Philip Hoke, the dean of the LA AGO, Sean O'Neill, and myself. So that's Sunday, April the 4th at 3 p.m. If you forget, all of these events should be on our website and hopefully I will also post about them on Facebook and slightly reluctantly Instagram. 
If you are watching in the Minneapolis area, I'll be giving a recital at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Fridley a week later on April 21st at 3 p.m. That's in the Minneapolis area, April 21st. And very important and dear to me, our annual event on Saturday, May the 4th in the evening, a concert entitled May the 4th Be With You will return with a program centered by my arrangement, a Star Wars organ suite. We're gonna have two editions this year. My UCLA colleague, Grammy winner, Gloria Cheng, will, partic will participate by performing selections from John Williams' concert music, Conversations on Piano, and we will also be joined by the Sonora Chorus on Duel of the Fates. And I think it's 25 years since the wonderful movie, The Phantom Menace, came out, so we're celebrating that anniversary as well. This is offered without an admission charge, but donations towards the great organs are greatly appreciated, once again, through fccla.org forward slash give, or by talking to Reverend Chad or any of our other staff, including myself personally. You are invited to all of our events. Quick reminder, this afternoon at 3 p.m., Musica Angelica with Maestro Martin Haselberg are going to present the amazing Bach's St. Matthew Passion right here in historical performance practice with historical instruments. Not to be missed, so afterwards, go have coffee and donuts here, then grab some lunch or go for a walk and come back at 3 p.m. Thank you for being with us today.
Good morning and welcome to First Congregational Church of Los Angeles. In this sacred time, we are free to be who we are, to love who we love, and to explore our spirituality surrounded by the beauty of this cathedral and the beauty of all of us who have gathered on this day from both near and far. This morning, we continue our celebration of music that began yesterday with the Bach Festival, a wonderful gift from our partners, Musica Angelica. We welcome members of their, their orchestra to our service today as they join our cathedral choir and laude. In our tradition, Palm Sunday sets us on a journey that takes us through Holy Week. We invite you to enter into this day as together we open ourselves to this most holy week. And we open our minds, our hearts, our bodies, and our spirits, which will be intertwined with the story of our tradition in the days to come. It is a story which welcomes every single one of us. Whether we have a little faith, a lot of faith, absolutely no faith, or if we are of another faith. Listen now to this reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, the Palm Parade. Jesus had sent two of his disciples to go into the village and find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. Jesus instructed them to say, if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the promised one needs it, and we'll send it back immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, why are you untying the colt? They replied with the answer Jesus had given. The promised one needs it, they said. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Those who needed answers those who had come looking for peace begin shouting, Osana, blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Osana in the highest heaven. Please stand in body or in spirit for our Palm Sunday processional.
a loving God on this Palm Sunday, we open our hearts, our minds, and our bodies to you. Through this season of Lent, we have invited you into our innermost being as we have worked to journey together toward understanding the love you have for us and the love that resides deep within each one of us. This morning, we ask that you will strengthen us as we continue on this journey. Help us to not only see the path of love, but help us to walk this path with you as we enter this most holy week. We pray this in the name of the one who showed us the way. Amen and amen. Just truly angelic. Our holy scriptures tell us that we are all created in the image and likeness of God. In this place, we celebrate the mystery of who God is. We remember that our tradition is rich in calling the divine by many names. Because of this mystery, we invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer in your own tradition and your own language. In this way, we celebrate the interconnectedness 
of our lives, whether you come from near or from far. Let us now pray together as Jesus taught us. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. As we remember how elusive peace truly is, let us turn our hearts towards peace as we share these words together. We are invited this morning to open our hearts to the healing light of God's encircling presence. We are invited this morning to open our eyes to the opportunities this day has to offer. We ask that we will be surprised with small joys and pieces of beauty scattered through the hours. We ask that the beautiful presence of God will help us this, this day to taste the joy that peace with God and with each other can bring. This morning, may the heart of peace and love be with you. And also with you. You are invited to share this ancient greeting with a bow. Hear now this brief final part of the Palm Sunday story as told in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when Jesus had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went to Bethany with the 12 disciples. This is the gospel of love and grace. Thanks be to God. What does love feel like in private? A kindness, patience, touch, trust, rest, home, listening, forgiving, knowing a friend or partner has your back, doing something for another even if you don't understand it or are inconvenienced by it, like two friends retrieving a donkey because their teacher needs it. Cornell West said, tenderness is what love feels like in private. What then does love feel like or look like in public? Waving someone in in a long, slow line of traffic. Community, a place to belong. An invitation to a party, sharing food. Curiosity and wonder and gratitude at our diverse 
ways of being, exchanging smiles in a crosswalk, signal sounds at crosswalks for the visually impaired, fully accessible buildings, equitable access to healthy food and health care, a parade of peace, perhaps, to serve as a subversive foil to a Roman military parade, a trading of swords for palm branches, war horses for humble colts, a brutal occupation army for an inclusive community of the vulnerable and excluded. Cornell West said, justice is what love looks like in public. Social justice, restorative, reconciling justice, without whose presence we cannot know peace. Jesus arrives in Jerusalem singing a new song, singing of the seamless connection of love and justice across the personal and public. And yet for the 200,000 or so Jewish pilgrims in Jerusalem there to celebrate the Passover, their liberation from slavery in Egypt so many centuries before, there is something familiar in Jesus' new song. An old prophecy from the book of Zechariah comes to life before them when the long-awaited one would ar arrive riding on a donkey, announcing peace to the nations. Hosanna, save us. This is the moment, the people sing in reply. Make freedom from Rome, that new age of true peace, a reality. Johann Sebastian Bach loved inserting old, well-known hymn tunes into new musical works like he does in the motet that we'll soon hear. A signal, perhaps, to the listener, pay attention, don't miss the heart of it. Zingit dem Herrn was a funeral piece, a reflection on our mortality, and yet amid this musical procession comes something familiar, a well-known chorale at the time whose words bear a beautiful reminder that though this earthly life may be fleeting, Divine compassion flows to us ceaselessly each moment. Divine love parades on the daily through our hearts and veins and breath. Yet life's reality, full as it is of dashed hopes and expectations, makes us skeptical of the truth of such lovely claims. For many, that first Palm Sunday, the disappointment probably began at the end of the procession that evening. As Mark reports, Jesus, looking around and seeing it was late, retreats to Bethany. Some revolution. But it was. Esteban Salas' Te Deum, the opening piece choir and or orchestra will offer, is a majestic song of triumph, a song of overcoming, of arrival and achievement. So was Jesus' song throughout Palm Sunday and the rest of Holy Week. But the triumph was of powerless love over loveless power. Love's enabling us to endure and overcome in the face of opposition, violence, and hatred. What Jesus achieved was an unflinching commitment to unapologetic love unapologetic in its refusal to keep violence in circulation, unapologetic in its encountering of all people, insisting on their dignity, reminding each of their preciousness despite how the world had convinced them or shamed them to believe otherwise, unapologetic in its sharing freely and lavishly because all need it and all are worthy of love. I wonder what Jesus on a donkey would say in our time of endless productivity and never enoughness, our endless ladder climbing, achieving, performing, and having to prove ourselves. Don't just tell me about your success, status, or position, but tell me how deep, how unapologetic is your love. Yes, it was some revolution that came parading into town that day. Jesus wielding unapologetic love and unarmed truth. It's not only how Jesus entered Jerusalem, of course, but how they entered the world. 
I love that at the beginning of this Holy Week, the final of Jesus' life, we'll hear claras luces, a viancico, a Christmas carol about Jesus' birth. News of this baby's arrival in a backwater town, far from the seat of power in Jerusalem to a poor working-class family, caused quite the stir. A baby some were calling the Anointed One threw the powers of the day into a violent rage. A baby. A reminder that truth need not be armed, need not be shouted, but whispered, sighed, or cooed. Jesus' birth also shone a clear light on the truth of divine love, a love that identifies with and uplifts the vulnerable, unlovable, and suffering, and finds its way into the world through the edges and those overlooked. A condition of truth, of course, is allowing suffering to speak. 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. 11.6 million kids, 16% of our children in this country live in poverty. Racial disparities in health care can determine length of life and infant and mother mortality, job pay, and so much more. I wonder what Jesus on a donkey would say in our time of alternative facts, our time of it's true if I feel it's true. Speak the truth, even if your voice shakes. Resist the intoxicating lie of individualism, echoing Cole Arthur Riley, and sense the injustice or need of one as the unflinching responsibility of the collective. Who is that one in your sphere, in ours? Yes, it was some revolution that came parading into town that day. Jesus wielding unapologetic love, unarmed truth, and unwavering courage. It takes courage to love unapologetically, courage to speak the truth unarmed without pretense, arrogance, or bitterness. It takes courage to name injustice and call out power for neglecting what it was put in power to do. Courage to love even one's enemies when they've forgotten your sacredness. Courage to crisscross Spain on a donkey, like Teresa of Avila did, founding 15 monastery communities for women's education. Courage to demand a livable wage for your staff, like Esteban Salas did at his church in Santiago, Cuba. Courage to make that church a center for music education for impoverished communities. Yes, it takes courage to become a lifeboat for the animal species in peril today, echoing Robin Wall Kimmerer, just as they have been ours since the beginning of time. It takes courage to reconnect with love, knowing all that love may compel us to do, all that love may compel us to become in private and public. Unapologetic love, unarmed truth, unwavering courage. How will we carry these into this Holy Week? What shape will our parade take with love as the Grand Marshal? I wonder what Jesus on a donkey would say in this time of courage deficit. While you're thinking on that, what's a parade without music? Amen.
we are incredibly grateful for the gifts of music on this Palm Sunday. We, the music of First Church continually helps us remember we are sustained by a goodness and a graciousness that gives us hope in the midst of our lives together. Today was made possible by your gifts, the gifts that you give each and every day and those you give to specially that make days like today possible. Thank you. This morning we pray that all of our offerings will bring life-changing good news to all those who receive the gifts of this church as we share these outpourings of generosity that echo God's steadfast love for the world. Loving God, on this day we pray that your spirit might fill these gifts we have given and will give. We also ask, Holy One, that we might all be filled and become vessels of your love, your hope, and your justice in the world. Remind us, O oh God, in these days of Holy Week that we belong to you and we belong to each other. We pray this in the name of the one who shows us the many paths that lead us to the divine presence. Amen and amen. Please be seated.
The Bach Festival this weekend concludes here in the sanctuary at 3 p.m. this afternoon as Musica Angelica presents Bach's St. Matthew Passion. We hope you will be here for that exciting conclusion of a beautiful and stunning weekend. And as Holy Week goes on before us, we invite you to join us on Thursday evening in Shadow Chapel for a Holy Thursday supper and shared communion. It begins at 6.30, and we invite you and ask you to please RSVP for this. It will be a lovely dinner of soup and bread and time to share the communion elements together. And as always, if you have little faith, lot of faith, no faith, or you are of another faith, this is an invitation for you to come and experience this tradition with us. And the following day on Good Friday, we'll have an experiential Stations of the Cross from 12 to 8 p.m., also in Chateau Chapel. And the Labyrinth will be available in the Mayflower Courtyard beginning Thursday. Mm -hmm. It will be open during the day, so we invite you to come at any time and to walk the Labyrinth. It has played such an important part this year in our Lenten journey. If you haven't had a chance to walk a Labyrinth anywhere, we certainly invite you to come on Thursday or on Friday. And finally, we'll celebrate Easter Sunday here in the sanctuary next week uh, with a reception following. The organ prelude concert begins at 1030, followed by our service at 11. We enjoyed these beautiful palms today that decorated our chancel and our cathedral. We invite you to help us as we change these flowers and as we prepare for Easter Sunday. If you would like to make a dedication in honor or in memory of someone important in your life, we would love to have you be part of that. You can see Obi at the table in the coffee hour today, and he will help you know how to do that and to take your dedication, which will be printed in the Easter Sunday program next week. And finally, you all are invited today to coffee hour following the service in Mayflower Courtyard to your left. And also our collaboratives, our uh, lay-led teams of community, spirituality, and justice will meet downstairs in Barnum Room, and lunch will be provided. Oops. Oops. <laughs> okay. okay. Prayers. to these words of blessing for this Palm Sunday. Let love now be present in every corner of your life, in every room you enter, every street you walk. 
Let love be beside you, around you, within you, as you face what your life has to offer. Remember that in your best times, it was love that brought you the joy you have known. And in your worst times, it was love that sustained your hope against all odds. Rely on this love. Draw deeply from its wells of strength. Be filled with its possibilities, even if you imagine it to be only a spark amidst the shadows. Its light will never leave you. Let Let love be be present present now now and in all all the days days to come as as you discover who you you truly are. are. Would you please be seated (laughs) for the postlude? (laughs) 